Hello everyone, welcome to example three. So I want to officially define the exponential function for us. And then I want us to look at some formulas, some functions and determine, hey, is this an exponential function or not? So here's the definition for how a function is officially an exponential function. So for any real number x, an exponential function is a function with the form of, there's your function notation, a times b to the x. So this a out here, it, it's a little constant. There's multiplication there. So here's your lead coefficient and then b to the x. So this term right here is the power, all right? This is technically the exponent, right? b here is the base. Ooh, there, let me get the letter b. And collectively together, they're called a power. So if I write b to the x, we could say that is a power Right, a power, b raised to a certain power, but technically we would say b is the base and x is the exponent. All right, so anytime your variable is in the exponent of, of a power, it's an exponential function. All right, so a is some non-zero real number. You might hear me called or refer to it as the initial value, and I'll talk a little bit more about why I say initial value in a moment. Um, b is any positive real number such that b isn't equal to one. And let me just give you a for instance while we're, we're introducing this idea. So let's say f of x was 4 times 3 to the x. All right, so I want to really unpack these first two bullet points so we can understand them. When we say a is a non-zero real number called the initial value, sometimes we refer to initial values as our y-intercepts, like what do we get when x is 0? So I want you to see what this initial value is. If I were to plug in 0 for x, this would be 4 times 3 to the 0. And we've talked about how anything raised to the 0 power is the number 1. So this is 4 times 1, which is just 4. And I could have seen that right out the gate. If I hadn't done any of this work, I could have seen my initial value to be the number 4. So a is always your initial value, meaning it's the y value when x is equal to 0. Because again, if x is equal to 0, this power is just 1 because anything to the zero is one, and a times one is itself a. All right, why we say b is any positive real number other than one? I want you to see what would happen if b was one. All right, what if f of x was four times one to the x? Well, one to the x is always one, right? Because one to the one, it's one. One squared, one. One cubed, one. One to the fourth, one. One to the one half, one. It's always going to be one, so this function, if we were to actually take it a little bit further, I could just say this is the horizontal line y equals 4 because 1 to the x is always x. That's why b can't equal 1. Because if the base was 1, then our function is really just that constant, that initial value. Now, anytime b is greater than 0, you're going to have exponential growth. Excuse me, greater than 1, I lied. If b is greater than 1, you have exponential growth. All right, and any time b is less than 1, or I should say trapped between 0 and 1, you're going to have exponential decay. And when I say exponential growth, that means as your x values get larger, so do your y values. And when I say exponential decay, that means as the x values get larger, your y values get smaller. And we saw a little exponential growth in example one. Let me just kick this back for a moment. This was an exponential function because our variable was up in the exponent. And just take note that our base is larger than one. It was two. And you saw as my x values got larger, my y values got larger. This is an example of exponential growth. All right, so the domain of every exponential function, every exponential function a times b to the x is all real numbers. We've talked about our three domain issues before. We don't have fractions, we don't have a radical, and we don't have a logarithm, so there's no domain issues I need to worry about, so my domain's all reals. I'm gonna show you graphically later the range of these functions. If A is positive, then your range will be all positive real numbers, and if A is negative, your range will be all negative real numbers. And when we get into the next section where we start graphing these functions, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that that gels a little bit more. 
I'm going to mention this now, but we'll really hone in on it in section 6.2. The y-intercept is 0, a, right, your initial value. We saw that over here. If I plug in 0, I get a back out. But we haven't seen why there is a horizontal asymptote at y equaling 0. And I will talk about that. And really, there's going to be a horizontal asymptote on one side of your graph, and there's going to be an arrow on the other. And we will get into these last bullet points when we get into the next section and we start graphing these functions. All right, but with that, with just this definition, let's look at example three. Which of the following equations represent exponential functions? And we have four options here. We have function f, g, h, and j. So let's take a look at f of x. All right, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Is that an exponential function? Well, I do have powers. I have one here and I have one here. But you'll see in this the, the base is where the variable is living, right? The variable is not in the exponent. The variable is in the base. So this is not an exponential function. This is actually a polynomial, right? We talked about this back in chapter 5. It's specifically, if you want to get specific, it is a quadratic function. All right, and I'm going to refer back to that giant trait table I gave you before that we talked about in chapter 5. So f of x is of the polynomial function family, right? It's in here. And we could talk about the traits of that polynomial function, but it's definitely a polynomial because the variable is down in the base and we have a constant up in the exponent. And that's true for the x squared term and the x to the first term. All right, here I do have my power and I'll take note that my variable is up in the exponent. So yes, this is an exponential function. Just so we line this up a little bit better, I want you to see here that my base is 0.875, and it's unwritten here, but my initial value, a, is 1. Now, because this base is smaller than 1, it's between 0 and 1, we actually have exponential decay here. All right, so because this number is a decimal, we have exponential decay. And we'll work with exponential decay sometimes, and we'll work with growth at other times. And the cutoff, again, if 1 is this equilibrium, right? If this was 1, my function would neither grow nor shrink. It would always stay constant, like we saw over here. It was constantly going to be 4. Whenever your base is larger than 1, you're going to have exponential growth. Whenever it's smaller than 1, or really between 0 and 1, you're going to have exponential decay. And this number was smaller than 1. All right, let's take a look at h of x. I've got a power here, right? This is x to the first power, but again, the variable is down in the base, so this is not an exponential function. This is another polynomial function. And if I want to get more specific, we talked about these types of functions in chapter 4. This is a linear function. All right, my slope is 1.75 and my y-intercept is 2. All right, let's take a look at this, this function here. So I've got 1095.6 raised to the negative 2x, right? And I see my variable up here in my exponent. So this is an exponential function. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, this is also exponential, or not also, this is exponential growth because you see your base looks to be a number larger than 1. But we have this negative exponent here, and that is going to affect what we do. So if you think about this number, I'm going to bring my calculator over here. I want us to think about 1095.6 raised to the negative 2 power. So if I think about that number, that's actually a really, really small number. It's 0. 0.000000833, right? That's definitely a number between 0 and 1. So this is another example of exponential decay. And if you're thinking, like, oh, what, what kind of wizardry are you doing here? Let me just, oops, I scooched my paper. Let me scooch it back up. Again, I could write this as 1095.6 to the negative 2 raised to the x if I wanted to, right? Because again, if I had a power raised to a power, I would multiply the exponent to negative 2 times x is negative 2x. 
So I just crunched that number on my calculator because that number is my base. And that number is trapped between zero and one. So this is going to represent exponential decay, not exponential growth. All right, so with that, we're gonna take a moment, head into our first word problem, and we are gonna look at some exponential growth together and see what we can figure, about, uh, figure out about the population of China. All right, I will see you in a few, gang. Bye.